Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. Today we've got some hard hitting stories of some entitled parents and our first story of the day is from artistic furball. Am I the jerk for hating Christmas after what my family did to me a few years ago? So I, 16 year old female, had always loved Christmas as a kid, was very eager to do the decorations, help out and everything else related. Nothing could ruin this for me but after what happened a few years ago I just disliked the whole thing. On to the story, by the time I was 12, my mom got a boyfriend, and being honest, I hated him. He treated her like crap. Worst part was her family was okay with this, actually wanted them to marry and all. I've always tried to look for her in that matter, as she's very smart and sweet, just very dumb when it comes to relationships and stuff like that. And before you say anything, yes, I know a kid shouldn't be worrying about that kind of thing, but I was really just worried. I tried telling her many times what a jerk he was, and no one would listen. They hated me for it actually, her family. So fast forward to Christmas, me, mom, her boyfriend, my aunt, my cousins, and my oldest cousin's boyfriend all go on a trip to a fancy hotel at the beach, which was huge, like you actually had to travel with golf carts to go from one place to another. And for starters, all this time I can't get a hold to spend some time with my mom because her family kept me apart from her on purpose. They know she works a lot and I can't see her most of the time, just in the night when she arrives, and she's still very busy due to her work. Which makes me feel bad as I just wanted some time with her. Heck, I even could have been happy with just an hour or so. Well, not to keep this more long, we were at a family dinner and I went in for my plate, sat down and tried to join the conversation to which my cousin's boyfriend and her start telling me to shut up, followed with my mom's ex-boyfriend. Yeah, I forgot to say they broke up not long after that, saying I should just eat and I respond, um, no, I'm just trying to talk with y'all. What did I do so wrong? And eventually they kick me out of the cabin. Like literally, it was nighttime and they kicked me, a 12 year old back then, out alone. One thing I forgot to say was, at that time, I was in a deep depression state. I still have it, but I'm better now, so I was particularly sensible. Next thing I know, I look back at everyone having dinner and just run away to the stop where the golf cart stopped by. I'm sobbing and crying, thinking, they hate me, what did I even do? I shouldn't have come in the first place, I'm an idiot. When the cart pulls up, I hop on and go to the bar near the pool. It was so late, no one was even around now. Still crying, I call my dad and tell him what happened, and of course he's furious, because another thing I didn't mention, my mom didn't even try to defend me. That's what was what left me the most heartbroken. My dad was so furious he almost came all the way to pick me up. Eventually things calmed down and I forgave mom because I understood that her boyfriend was a manipulative jerk, and moved on. But now, why am I even thinking this in the first place? Well, as it turns out, Christmas is very soon. My family's already planning on what we'll do, and the subject came up, to which I responded, I'm not interested. I hate Christmas, so please don't try to talk me into it. I'll just come be with you. But they reprimanded me for disliking it, and said I had no reason. So, I was wondering, am I the jerk? Did I overreact back then, or is it normal for me to still be hurt by this? I would say not only is it normal for OP to be hurt by this, but it would probably almost be expected. Would you guys agree with me that when this kind of stuff happens, especially when you're like 12 years old, this is stuff that might stick with you for a long portion of your life? That stuff like this, especially at a young age, is especially hard to move past and just try to forget about? I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Rogu320. Why is there no snow? So I saw someone else post recently about a lady asking about changing the weather, and it reminded me of a similar story. I manage a motel in a very small rural town that blows up during the winter as we live next to a mountain. Without a doubt, every year it would snow during winter over the town, but this year we were not graced by it. A guest who checked in the night prior came into the front desk the moment I flipped the open sign and started nonsense ranting. When her ranting was finally over, I gave her a moment to potentially say anything else and then asked, I'm sorry, what's the problem? She says, why is there no snow? I say, on the mountain? I assure you there's plenty. She says, no, I mean down here. I don't want to drive my kids all the way up the mountain for snow. I say, well, unfortunately, it seems we haven't had any reach down here. 
The mountain will most likely have had their snow machines working to help accommodate. She says, I don't want to go up the mountain, I want the snow here, so I don't have to drive my children all the way up there. I say, I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do to assist with that matter. She says, then change the weather. I say, the weather? Yes, change the weather. I brought my kids here for the snow. How would you like me to change the weather? I don't know, get one of those stupid machines to spread snow down here or something. I don't believe that I'll be able to arrange that. Figure it out. At this point, I knew we were both yelling at brick walls and I really needed to put food in me as I didn't have enough time to have breakfast before I arrived at work. So I calmly said, if you would like snow, then I'm sure there's some in the freezer I can scrape off and hand to you in a cup. No, this did not satisfy her. Yes, she was very angry and left a very heated and slightly deranged review. And yes, I laughed very hard after she stormed out complaining to the heavens that life was very unfair to her for not giving her snow. I've heard many a story about entitled parents, but I don't know if I've heard much more of a ridiculous request than change the weather. Change the weather? What, is OP gonna do a sacred snow ritual? Is OP gonna go start up the snow in the door? I don't think so. Our next story is from OK Carpet 9023 My mom would text herself things she thought I was saying about her as proof to ground me. When I was 13, my family decided to no longer have a relationship with my mom, and that also meant cutting themselves off from my little brother and I. I completely understand why now. When I got my first phone, my mom would have me turn it into her at 7pm. I was not allowed to have my phone with me at night. If she noticed a text chain was missing, then she automatically assumed it was because I was talking about her. When I was actually talking about embarrassing sexual fanfics with my friends. When this happened, my mom the next day would come into my room showing me some random number texting her, saying I was talking to my aunt, my uncle, or even my dad about her, who I never even talked to my whole life. I would always tell her this never happened, and she would just take my phone. I would realize later that she would also start texting my friends and even boyfriend later on, acting like me. She would do this all through high school playing the victim card and running to me crying. I was so confused wondering who the freak is getting me in trouble like this all the time. I would comfort her and tell her I never said this, but she never believed me. In college, my freshman year, she was arrested for identity theft again and didn't have much time to fight me on her delusions. Junior year, a political movement started and me and her were both on other sides of the movement. I hated coming home because I wanted to avoid politics, but she would always say ignorant crap and I'd always have to correct her. I texted my friends back at college how much I really despised my mom's mentality because we got into a big argument. That day, she comes into my room saying, look what one of your friends sent me. Another random number telling my mom that she's racist and claiming to be my friend. This was the best part. I looked at her and said none of my friends sent that. I just asked them all and they all said no. She asked if I was going to deny it and I told her no. I said that. I was telling my friends how dumb you are. Started crying right in front of me, asking why I would say such hurtful things about her to my friends. I think in that moment I had a realization. My whole childhood and teen life, this psycho was texting herself mean things she thought I was saying about her to make me feel guilty for things I never did. She wanted me to beg, cry, tell her how much I love her, and tell her those were lies. The minute I denied it broke her. It's been two years and we don't talk anymore. A few days during no contact, she would text me on random numbers saying she's going to ruin my life. I would screenshot this and show it to my brother. He would tell me, oh, mom's crying because that same number is texting her mean stuff too. So she never really stopped her bull. Different number now, but just feel silly that she did this my whole life and it took so long to realize. This lady sounds like she's a little too far off the deep end and I feel bad for OP for having to experience this throughout their adolescence. I mean, those years are already hard enough as it is without some psycho, controlling, role-playing in a weird way mom. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Tar Heels 8293 Entitled Mother Thinks We Control the Weather. I was formerly employed at a large Orlando, Florida theme park. You know, the one with the mouse. 
backstory, this takes place in the middle of July. And if you've ever been in Central Florida in the summer, you know it rains pretty much every single day between 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. In my role, I carried a radio like a walkie-talkie. This day, I'm in one of the parks, going to a location to perform my job, and as I'm walking through the park, the skies open. I mean, it's like buckets of water being poured out on you. I enter the location and see lots of people in ponchos and rain parkas standing around. I rarely perform my duties in the parks when they're open. When I do have to go into the parks, I usually walk with my head down, hoping no guests stop me. However, this wasn't the case on this day. Here comes Entitled Mother. She walks up to me madder than a hornet. She stands in front of me huffing and puffing and demands to know when the rain is going to stop. This is how the exchange took place. She says, um, sir, when is this rain going to stop? My children would like to enjoy insert theme park name. I say, ma'am, I can't be certain, but there's storms usually in this area every day. She says, you're ruining my kid's vacation. I say, excuse me, ma'am. She says, I save for years to bring them into insert park name here. And all it does is bleeping rain. This is all your fault. Ma'am, there isn't anything we can do about the weather. Mother Nature's a fickle lady. This is where she goes off the rails. She says, BS, I know you have some kind of way to stop the weather if you want. You people are just understaffed and can't accommodate the people here. I say, I can assure that is far from the case, ma'am. We want all of our guests to have the best time. Because if you don't, you won't come back and visit with us. You guys are the reasons we're here. Entitled Mother gets in my face, I mean nose to nose, and says, Go freak yourself. Make it stop raining. Get on your little radio and you better call someone to find something out. I'm not the most patient person in the world and I could feel the anger boiling inside me. I had to disengage myself from the psycho entitled mother or I would lose it and my job. When there's really bad thunderstorms, like the one we were experiencing that day, we would get random weather updates on our radios. Just then, the alert sound for an impending weather update came over my radio. I excused myself from Entitled Mother and stepped away to listen to the weather update. The person said the thunderstorm would exit property around 4.35 p.m. I returned to the Entitled Mother and said this in the most sarcastic way I could, knowing I would properly get in some kind of trouble. Ma'am, I just spoke to God and he said the rain would be gone by 4.35 p.m. Shockingly? Entitled Mother looked at me and said, Thank you. I just stood there with my mouth open. And I took this as a sign for me to exit the scene. Flash forward about an hour, and I'm still in the park. The rain had stopped, the sun was back out, and it was humid as all heck. Just out of the corner of my eye, I spot Entitled Mother, and she's making a beeline straight for me. I think to myself, Great, it was nice working here. She says, thank you for calling someone so they would make it stop raining. I say with a, huh, what? Look on my face. Huh? She says, I knew you guys could turn that off. Still with a, huh, what? Look on my face. I mumble, you're welcome, ma'am. I walked back to my work truck laughing the entire way. Maybe this lady saw a little too much of uh, what the Epcot plans were originally going to be. Maybe she believed a little too much in the whole Disney magic. I mean, hey, if this was part of the actual original Epcot, the whole place would have been domed in. There wouldn't be rain, which actually would have been pretty cool to see. Going back and watching the old video of Walt Disney walking through the original Epcot plan is actually pretty darn cool, by the way. Epcot stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, and it was supposed to be like this whole domed-in city residential area, the whole place air-conditioned and regulated, no, like, bad weather. It was a shame it didn't get realized because Walt Disney kicked the bucket early. Our next story is from Tainted Glass 13, when even karma sides with you. Setting the scene in Fair Verona, there once lived a pair of typical upper-middle-class American empty nesters. My older brother B and I both live in the same metropolitan area as said family home. We're both in our 30s and work full-time, while our mother M, 63, is retired, and my father F, 62, works from home and will be retired in the coming year. We were raised with traditional gender roles firmly in place and a strong preference for my brother despite the fact that he SA'd me for three years in our childhood, a fact that he is denied to this day. 
and later dropped out of school and started dealing drugs before finally joining the military to straighten out, while I remained a straight-A student who graduated and went on to a major university throughout caring for M through surgery, chemo, and radiation for breast cancer, while F traveled the world for work. The gender roles thing didn't really stick with me between the abuse and being raised in a very liberal community. I sort of turned into a raging feminist and sometimes misandrist. What can I say? I'm not perfect. But nevertheless, it's a continuing pattern that I'm expected to cook and bake for family events or help plan or run errands for, etc. Meanwhile, brother is rarely asked to bring anything. And if he is, it always amounts to something he picks up from the grocery store. Today is my father's birthday. Rewind to a week ago, mother creates a group chat with brother and I asking about getting together for father's birthday. Brother replies that he could do something Monday night, which is a little annoying that he can't do something on the weekend, but we'll just let that one go. Mother suggests that we need to do it at their house since they have a dog with a recent epilepsy diagnosis and they don't feel comfortable leaving her alone at this time, which is more than fair. The conversation turns to dinner plans. Mother, knowing I've recently been to a peach orchard and have a bunch of peaches, a favorite of father's, asks me to bake him a cobbler, as is the usual family preference over cake. I'm happy to do this as I love baking and I need to use my peaches. She also mentions getting takeout and coordinating it with us to pick it up, which is fine but I already know I'll be picking it up. The subject drops until Wednesday, when I meet mother for a class we signed up for previous to all this. She mentions that she's also making an apple pie for Monday, as brother doesn't like peaches, which seems a bit overkill, as we easily could have just had pie, but sure, that's fine too. So this brings us to Sunday. I received the call from mom to let me know that brother said he'd be over at 6 or 6.30, and as expected, would I please pick up the food. I politely ask... Would it be possible for brother to pick it up and receive the response that he's coming from further away? I remind mother that it's just that I have to make the cobbler after work because it's really best if it's fresh and we don't seem to ever ask him to do or bring anything for holidays. She backpedals saying we can move the time to later but really we shouldn't go too late as brother works early mornings. I say we don't have to change the time but if he could just go home, exit out of his way, It would save us all the time, as I'd be forced to drive across our main shopping mall at 5.30 to get the food, leaving me only an hour at best after work to make the cobbler. She just says, I'm not going to call him back to do it now. I've reached my limit on pushing for this, so I say, It's fine, I'll figure it out. Please put in the order early in the day so they can plan to have it ready for me when I get there. And then calmly add, Please try and think about what you're asking of me and him as we go into this holiday season as this practice of expecting nothing more than for him to show up is getting really old in 2022. Mother's reply, well I don't keep notches on the bedpost. I ended the call. So here we are today and I've just received a message that brother's car broke down and he won't be coming so the evening's off. I feel bad for my father in this and I'll be sending him a text that I'll drop off the painting I did for him as a gift in the mailbox later tonight. Now excuse me while I invite my chosen family over for Peach Cobbler. The end. I feel for OP because it's pretty apparent that they have expectations for OP that they would never place on their sibling. Also don't get me wrong but if the brother's driving from further away and it's just takeout that they're picking up, doesn't that mean like it makes more sense for them to pick it up? Because if it's just takeout it's probably a chain so I imagine there has to be a location that would be on the way if they're driving from a decent distance. All I know is respect to OP for calling it out and trying to keep their parents honest about the golden child. That said, our final story of the day is from Gasty the Gast, my entitled neighbor. I, 21-year-old female, live with my parents and other family members on land. I don't know how big it is. We have this family that also lives on the land, but they rent it from my father. We've known this family for somewhat of a long time. I have no issue with the father or the kids. It's mainly the mother, Ash. Female, I don't know her age. Ash has always been in a nice word a female dog before we had moved onto the land she used to live at creekside we used to go over to their house to hang out whenever i went i mostly went for the internet ash would then tell me that i had to play with her kids 
and when I asked why did I, my father chimed in and said the same thing, that I had to play with the kids. It was all the time I went over there. Now, that isn't really that much of entitlement, but here's why I'm making this post. Just yesterday, Ash's youngest daughter Kathy, 8 or 9 year old female, found a baby squirrel on the ground. She went to her mother, and she and her oldest daughter Effie, 12 year old female, crowded around it and put it in a box. My mother sent me out there to see what they had found. When I got over, Kathy told me, a baby squirrel fell out of its nest. I then said that sometimes the mama squirrel will toss their babies out of the nest, which is a known fact. Ash then chimed in with, no, that doesn't happen. Now, I had first thought that maybe she didn't want me saying that to Kathy because of how young she is, so I then turned to Ash and asked, what? Ash then proceeded to state it again as if it was a fact, so that's when I realized that Ash was meaning what she said. So once again I state an actual fact, and Ash looked at me and said, OP, I rescued a baby squirrel and raised it. I'm also working in an animal rescue. I know more than you do, which by the way, that baby squirrel that they rescued can no longer ever go back to the wild, since now the squirrel thinks cats are its friend. They domesticated a squirrel and are proud of it. Also, she doesn't work for any animal rescue, she's just part of some group on Facebook. Not the same. I said, okay, and looked back at the squirrel. I didn't say anything else, since it wasn't worth getting into a fight. She then chimed in with, go back inside, you're being disrespectful. I was pissed, but I went back inside and once inside the house, I told my mother what they found and what Ash said to me. I then went back to what I was doing. A couple of seconds later, my mother is pissed again, since Ash and her girls perched their butts on our lawn to watch the baby squirrel in case the mother comes back, which is most likely never gonna happen, cause it's clear that the mother tossed the baby out of the nest. The poor thing looked like it hadn't eaten. Not to mention, two hours before all of that, me and my mother were outside doing yard work and didn't hear the baby squirrel. My mother then asks me to let the dogs out. Now, I would like to say that this all happened in the front yard at our driveway. I went out and I was going to check the mail. Now, to do that, I had to go to the driveway, since our mailbox was on the other side of our fence and that was the only way to get to the mailbox. The box with the baby squirrel wasn't anywhere near the entrance of our driveway. It was a long distance away from it. I went out and I went behind them since I didn't want to disturb them. The dogs mainly wanted to see the kids rather than a box. Ash then tells me that I can't go that way since she blocked off not just the area where the box was but also the entrance to our driveway and where they were sitting. I looked at her shocked and asked why? I'm not even going near the box. She then said I can't be within a 100 mile radius of the box in case the mother returned. I once again reminded her of the fact that most times the mother will toss the babies out of the nest. And she again got upset that I challenged her knowledge. She then told me, I'll hold the dogs while you go check the mail. Now that does seem like a good comparison, but why would I need to do that on my own property? She can't just block off a section of our land that isn't hers. I fought her over it and once again reminded her that I wasn't even going near the box and that it was far away from the entrance of the driveway. She then decided that she didn't like the fact that I wasn't listening to her, so she really threatens me with calling my father, who was at work at the time. That's something she and her husband do a lot. When we don't let them get their way, they turn around and call my dad to complain, instead of talking to my mother. Then my mother gets yelled at by my father, which causes my mother to not just cry but also get stressed out, which isn't good for her since she goes into seizures. I asked Ash the moment she brought up my dad, you're really going to call my father over something like this and bother him? She said yes because you're being disrespectful. Kathy made me laugh when she mumbled, he's not going to care. I then asked her why call and bother my father when she could go and talk to my mother. Ash then used my mother's seizures as an excuse as to not talk to my mother, claiming that ever since she started them, she's gotten an attitude and that she's a hermit and needs to be more social. I then told her, oh my god, you're just like my grandmother, because my grandmother says the same thing about my mother's seizures. We then go back and forth, all while the dogs, who are on their leashes, don't even care about the box, but mostly care about the bathroom. After the third time Ash had threatened me with my dad, I snapped at her, my mother doesn't even want you up here. 
I mainly did that because Ash pissed me off. After that, I started walking back to the house and Kathy chimed in with, You have an attitude. I yelled back, Well, so does your mother. I know full well that Ash heard me. I then went inside and I yelled out, Ash is a freaking runt. I know that was probably the wrong thing to say, but Ash really upset me, and I rarely use that word on people. I mean, you have to do something really bad to make me use that word. Plus, she didn't even hear me say it. I was inside the house while she was outside, calling my dad like a child calling their mommy when they don't get their way. I shocked everyone in the house, which was mainly my mother, my older sibling, and a friend. I then let the dogs go into their cages and everyone was asking me what Ash said to me to make me snap, but all I did was run to my mother's room. I was going to tell her what Ash said, but that's when my walls broke. I ran instead to my mother's bathroom to cry, but not out of sadness, out of fear of my dad yelling at me. After that, Ash's husband called my mother two times, which caused my mother to freak out and stress, which caused her to go into a seizure. My older sibling then decided to walk my little sister's dog, who is big. They walked right past Ash and the girls, and Ash had the audacity to ask, Why are you letting the dogs out today? Basically as if we let them out once a freaking day. After that, her husband got home, and she lied to him, and said that we laughed at the dead baby squirrel, which we didn't even know was dead. Don't worry, it wasn't actually dead. Now my dad basically wants me to just roll over whenever Ash says something mean to me. As if that's going to solve the problem. I mean, she might tell me, Oh, did you get yelled at? In a considering tone. And if I ignore her, she'll think she won and she can step all over me. I don't want that again, since I've been bullied before. Ignoring the bullies doesn't actually solve anything. Because now Ash can just think she can get away with anything. But that's my dad for you. Instead of fixing the issue, he just tells us to leave Ash and the others alone and just leave them be. Like when Ash told Kathy that she was allowed to pick my mother's berry bush. Kathy then proceeded to rip branches off the bush to feed them to their pet squirrel. After that, my mom had had enough and just snipped off all the branches of the bush. And apparently Kathy complained to her father about that and then he complained to my dad. But also, my mom has a fig tree, which apparently Ash let, and allowed Kathy to pick those as well, since their grandfather liked them. Also, this happened in the past, before they moved in. When we moved in, my dad was thinking about buying my mom a greenhouse, and when Ash found out, she complained and told my parents that, instead of buying my mother one, Ash could buy one and my mother could use it, since it'd be stupid to have two greenhouses on the land. It upset my mother that Ash told my parents what to do with the land, when once again her name isn't on it. She just rents. My older siblings pay for their electric, and my little sister has the Wi-Fi. That family doesn't really own crap on the land, besides their shed. And again, I have no issues with the kids and the husband, it's only Ash. Do you guys agree with me when I say that although Ash is perpetrating a lot of these issues, the real issue at hand here is OP's dad? Why is OP's dad letting Ash have so much say in everything? And also, the dad, quite frankly, is abusing their entire family. Imagine being so confrontational that you drive your own wife to having seizures? I mean, something's seriously wrong with this dude. I don't know what the solution is here, but you just hope that somehow OP and their mom could get away from somebody like that. I wish OP nothing but the best. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely hard-hitting entitled parent story, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.